The process of change is what we got to deal with. It's a process sometimes for God to work through to get us to the place where he can manifest it. And that's why you need to learn how to walk by faith. and not by sight so you don't lose your faith in the process. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot, Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. Okay, all right, thank you for that big amen. So we've been teaching on the power of generosity. Everybody say the power of generosity. And uh, Brendan and I uh, wanted you to know that we're not teaching this for us. We're teaching it for you. See, we already operate in this area, and God has already did so many miraculous things in our life. It's amazing, and we're teaching this because we want God to do something in your life. Everybody in here, and you watching by television or the Internet, all of you in here have some kind of needs you want to be met. That's two hands that went up. No, the rest of you are too late. You should have got it up in there. But you have some things that you want God to do. Now, there's a saying, there's a saying that I've heard, uh, and I believe it to be true, and that saying is, is that uh, uh, if if you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's what? Insanity. Insanity. Come on, if you keep doing the same thing over and again, but expecting different results, it's called what? Insanity. Insanity. And see, some of us are stuck in insanity. Now, we want God to do something, but we're stuck in insanity because we're continually doing the same thing over again. So whatever you did last year, you're doing the same thing this year. You haven't changed. But you want God to do something for you that you have not changed your area of your ways in that area. And I found out that one of the biggest things for God's miracle working power in your life because God is a generous God. I need a better amen than that. God is a generous God. Can I tell you why you know he's generous? Because you're still alive. Because everybody in here ain't always lived up to what you were supposed to live up to. But it's the mercy of God. What's the name? Jehovah Hasid. A loving and merciful God has watched over you and protected you when you was acting as crazy as they could come. Turn your neighbor and tell them I feel uncomfortable sitting next to you right now. I feel uncomfortable sitting next to you because you was one of them, you tell them you was one of them crazy ones at one time. Thank God I, I declare my days of being crazy are over with. Watch this here. I declare my days of being insane are over with too. Insanity too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. All of you in here, you want God to do something for you. And guess what I want you to know? Guess what I want you, guess what you want you to know? Did I say that right? Uh, And that is, hey man, I'm just checking myself. Anyway, because sometimes, you know, uh, my ebonics comes out. And so I got to check myself. So you you want God to do something, but you're not changing. (laughs) And nothing will happen until you start changing. And I found that the biggest thing that brings God's greater blessing is when you step up your generosity. Mm, That was good, good, good. When you step up your generosity, being a blessing to other people, making a difference in things that you can, when you step up your generosity, God steps up his generosity. Come on, write that down. When I step up my generosity, God will step up his generosity. There's a lot of things that this will not happen when you, why you keep doing the same thing. Listen to me, you need to step up your generosity in your prayer time. Do you know God wants more time with you than what you've given him? Let me just talk to this side. Do you know God wants more time than you've given him? When I step up this year, whatever I had last year, in my prayer time, I should be increasing some more time to be in his what? Presence. Stepping up your time in your prayer time, as well as in the reading of the word. How much word did you read every day? How much time are you spending in the word? Well, then I need to be more generous by spending more time in the word this year than I did last year. 
Why y'all looking at me like that? I don't know if I'm, I don't feel comfortable the way you're looking at me right now. So, so generous in my prayer time. Come on. Generous in the area of, of, my, of my spending time in the word. What about being your generosity in helping other people? How much time did you give to being able to serve it in helping other people last year? So the more you spend, the more generous you get, watch this here, the more generous God gets with you. How much, how much did you give into the kingdom last year? How much did you give? How, are you giving the same thing you gave last year that you gave year before then and year before then? And then you want God to increase your, your blessing, but you're not increasing and showing God that you mean business. So I can't give on the same level I gave last year and expect God to do something different this year. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you understand that or do I have to preach it to you? <laughs> Tell them, do you understand, do I have to preach it to you? It's like the, the, church, the church was uh, receiving a special offering. This church was receiving a special offering for a building program. And, um, and so the pastor got up. Uh, this is, might be a little old for some of y'all. You don't know what I'm talking about. But they got up and said, uh, the pastor said, whoever gives a, a $1,000 today, into the building program can select three hymns. And uh, this old lady raised her hand up. And I used to, I don't like to use the word old lady no more or old, but you know, thank God I'm 66. So, I, you know, I, I understand about being a senior citizen right now. So, uh, so I'm gonna say about 94. <laughs> and this old lady raised her hand up. She said, I give that $1,000. And the pastor said, you gonna give it? She said, yes. She said, and I would like to select my three hymns. He said, well, go ahead and select them. She said, I take him, him, and him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, you're laughing, but you know, 90 is not old anymore. You know, used to be, but hey, we're going to live a long time. So, so she knew what she was so asking she, for. She, 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 had, she, had, she had some hymns on her mind. Join us in Sacramento at Calvary Christian Center for our Easter celebration. It's a special day for the entire family. Our sunrise service begins at 5.30 a.m. Or if you're not an early riser, we have special Easter services scheduled later that morning at 7.30 or 11.30 a.m. And if you don't live in Sacramento, you can always visit a Central Valley campus near you. Just visit our website. It's Easter at Calvary Christian Center. Coming to Sacramento. How, how do you come up with low self-esteem when the Word of God tells you to think highly of yourself? Because God does. He calls you His child. But see, if you don't know that, then you end up gravitating to what people say about you. God wasn't after Jesus. He already had Jesus. He's after you. We're inviting some five-star generals. Everything Jesus was, everything Jesus is, everything Jesus will ever be is in that seed that raised him up out of hell, and it's in you. Exclusively in the capital city at Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento. We all start out with the same measure of faith. Now, what I do with it, that's my responsibility. And that will determine whether that measure literally increases or diminishes. For information on how you can help us celebrate, just head to our website. So in the book of 2 uh, uh, Corinthians, I, I, I left off there, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I just want to hit it and bring out a couple of points on that area, if you uh, would stick with me right now. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, uh, we do you to wit of the grace of God that was bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. I said, uh, this grace of God that was upon them. Uh, if, you know, if you do any study on the, mass, on the churches, Macedonia was one of the churches that went through more tribulations and trials than any other church, but they, they had a grace that they received from God upon them. And look what it says here in verse 2. And it says, how that in a great trial of what? Come on, everybody. In a great trial of what? And, and in the abundance of their what? Their joy. 
and their deep what? Poverty. They abound unto the riches of their liberality. Here's this church, congregation, believers that are going through hell, going through major challenges in their life. And mainly is dealing with a lot of it is dealing with their finances, their health, their family, everything you can name. The devil is throwing everything he can at them. But they did not allow their circumstances to dictate to them by how that they were going to respond to God. See, a lot of Christians say they walk by and not by But most Christians still walk by and not by faith. Amen. Just keep looking at me. Nobody know I'm talking about you right now. But see, your breakthrough is not going to happen by walking by sight. It's going to happen by walking by faith. What does the Bible say, Brenda, in uh, Hebrews 11 and 6? It says, uh, without faith. Without faith. It's impossible to please God. Yes. For those who believe in, you must believe that he is. First of all, you got to believe that he is. Yeah, that's it. They, those that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. But those that believe in him, that come to him must believe. And that's why we are teaching you so you can believe, so you can have faith. This is what the word is here for us to have faith so we can believe that he is. You won't have any problem with this message if you can you believe that he is. So, and so, that he's a rewarder. Okay, go ahead. And that he is a rewarder. Not just that he is, but he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm, mm, mm. And, and all I got to say is, wow. Because God said if you are pursue his presence, to please him, to honor him, you will not go unrewarded. Let me just talk to this side over here. You will not go unrewarded. And so no pursuit of God, and no matter how every way you ended up in your pursuit after him, will go unrewarded. So he says here that if, by faith. So we got to be careful that we don't allow ourselves to get tied into where the enemy holds it back. Look what it says, how that integrate. Put it in the Amplified Bible real quickly. Can you put that? So no, I'm going to go back to uh, 2 Corinthians eight. 8 and 2. And 8 and 2 in the Amplified something. Because it talked about a great trial of afflictions. It talked about their deep poverty. But one thing that happened for them is that they, it says, and the abundance of their joy. Now, how in the world can you have abundance of joy in the midst of the worst time of your life? Come on, I'm asking y'all a question. How can you have abundance of joy in the worst time of your life? Let me just ask the question here. How many of y'all ever had some great trials of affliction in your life? And how many of y'all know most of us did not have no bunch of joy at that time? No, we, we cried, we complained, we belly ached, uh, whatever we could do, but we didn't have no big, great joy. Because you know what? Your joy is going to be determined by the faith that you have in God. See, they had faith in God that God was going to still deliver them in the midst of whatever their situation was. How many of you ladies ever had a man mistreat you? Richard, you raise your hands up. All y'all ladies raise your hand up. Some of y'all need to raise both your hands up. Raise both your hands up. <laughs> and don't. All right. Woo, woo. Okay. Then. It's time to man up. Men, join us this summer for the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. We are going to dive deep into issues only men can relate to, from relationships to career moves to the secret sins most men don't want to discuss in public. We get challenged a lot more than people think that we get challenged. More temptation. I don't know if you are a real man, but I'm talking to the real men. We expect to see you at the Real Men's Conference getting built up on the Word of God this August. See you there. You don't want to miss this one, guys. This is not for the ladies. It's the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. It's time to man up, men.
For more information, just log into our website or call us. Be there. All right. Woo, woo. Okay. A man mistreats you, or say you're married and you're in a relationship and you're believing for the other one to change. Are you with me? You believe for them to change, but they got such a nasty, n negative attitude. It's hard for you to try to stay in faith, believing that they can change. But I'm telling you right now, God can change Magilla Gorilla. He can. Amen. He can change anything if we can stay in faith. Now, the process of change is what we got to deal with. It's a process sometimes for God to work through to get us to the place where he can manifest it. And that's why you need to learn how to walk by faith. and not by sight so you don't lose your faith in the process. Everything don't always happen as fast as we want it to. But boy, I wish it did. Don't y'all just wish, bang, zang, did it happen that way? No, it don't. There's a process in that. And that's why you need to have, uh, be around faith family need to be around like believers. You need to be around, get the word that encourages you to keep you, keep pushing on until you get your manifestation. Then you can raise your hand up and you can testify. All right, okay, okay. So look what this Amplified says. Can you put it on the screen for me? And the Amplified said, for in the midst of their ordeal of severe tribulations, their abundance of joy and their depth of poverty, together with overflowing, flowed in what? Wealth of lavish generosity on their part. Overflowed with lavish generosity. Now you would think that what the time that they're dealing with this here, they would just say, well, I can't afford to give. You know, we're going through it. And they bag down off of their generosity. But they understood something that every believer needs to understand. God is not limited to your circumstance. No, come on. God is a big God. Come on. Ask your neighbor and say, how big is your God today? That's what I want to know. God is a big God. And when we serve, come on, when we serve, what kind of God? Big God. A big God likes getting involved with somebody that can believe him for something big to happen. So he says here, and then when they, in the midst of their uh, 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 severe tribulation, severe tribulation, and, and in their depth of poverty, they still had abundance of joy. Now I'm declaring no matter what you're dealing with today, and you watching by television or internet, I'm declaring that no matter what you're dealing with today, that you're going to maintain your joy that your season of trial and tribulation is going to be shortened and that God is going to reward your faith in your trial in a big way in Jesus' name. Can we agree on that? All right. Now, uh, look what it says in verse 7. I mean, I would like for you, if you would do, if you would just read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter because I've already taught it, so I'm trying to just hit a couple points where I can move on. In verse 7, and it says, well, I'm going to start at verse 6, and it says, Insomuch that ye desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you, in you, uh, the same grace also. This, I call it the grace of generosity, the spirit of generosity, of giving. Then it says, therefore, as ye have abound, everybody say abound. As you abound in what? Everything. Come on, say it loud. As you abound in what? Everything. In, in what? Faith. Faith. And in what? Utterance. And in what? Knowledge. And in all? Diligence. Diligence. And in your what? Love, Love to us. See. Somebody holler out, see. See. See that ye what? Abound, abound in this, this. You need to circle the word this. This grace, underlying grace also. Listen to me, though you abound in faith and love and all the things, see that you abound in this grace. It is called the grace of generosity because this is what moves God. God so loved the world that he, gave. Jesus so loved the world that he gave everything. 
See, we're living today. Every one of us in here and you watching by the internet television, we all are living off of his generosity right now. And what God wants us to do, if we call ourselves as believers and love God, then God's calling us to live a generous life by being a blessing and a help to others, building his kingdom, taking advantage of every opportunity that you can. Say amen. Amen. All right. Now, uh, I brought out uh, the last time uh, we brought out, at least between Brenda and I, I brought out that generosity honors God. Somebody say that. Honors God and generosity is worship. Now that makes me understand why you under attack and I'm under attack. See, Brenda and I, we came from, from basically nothing. To me, for Brenda and I to be where we are is amazing. This is amazing. We're a miracle right here. This girl and I are a miracle. Now, you know, we just celebrated last week 43 years of marriage. That's a miracle. It's a, mir it's a miracle. And I only had this one woman right here for 43 years. That's it. Nobody else. I just, right here, I call her El Shaddai. She more than enough. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but, but, but Brenda and I to be married after all these years, to pastor and all the hell we've been through, and then for God to even call us to get the, the, the call us into ministry is amazing to me. And then Brenda and I both were raised in extreme poverty, and Brenda and I decided we wanted to get married. But our parents, her parents, couldn't afford to pay for nothing for the marriage, uh, for the wedding. And so we just decided, and, and, and even mine, we decided, well, we're just going to get married, and we're going to believe God. We're going to believe God that we can, because she wanted a wedding. See, for me, you could have just went to the courthouse. Come on, brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about. I didn't have to walk down no aisle and dress all up. Just take me to the courthouse and say, dang, let's get on, let's go, okay. But Brenda wanted a wedding. And so we, we had nothing. We had nothing, but when we started using our... Now that you've heard the word, I want you to accept Christ in your life. It's the greatest thing that can happen for you. So say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now, if you did that, you've already, he's in your life. Thank God you have to do nothing else but just open your heart. If you did that, I'm in agreement with you. Write us, call us, email us, uh, text us, or go on uh, at Philip Godot, either Twitter or Facebook, and we are getting, being back in contact with you. Love you, praying for you, move forth in your life. Something supernatural happens when you get puppet. He is my Jehovah Bell Parisi. He's the God of my breaking through. We are just so blessed. The Lord has blessed us and increased us. We're just excited. If you get the root, you'll get some fruit. If the first fruit be blessed, then the rest of us will be blessed. What did God do? Set you up. I bring a spirit of rejoicing. All right, here we go. Positioning. To succeed in any aspect of your life, you must be in the proper position. But your blessing and your gifting and your talents are never going to manifest like you need to, until you get into a position where perfecting can start and the perfecting helps bring out the seed that is being sown through your, your being in the position and being perfected that brings out the abundance of harvest in your life. In Dr. Godot's latest series called For the Positioning of the Saints, you'll learn how to pinpoint where God wants you to be in your relationships, on the job, and even in ministry. Learn how to be in the right place at the right time in your life. For the Positioning of the Saints. Order the series today. Ladies, this summer, join Dr. Brenda Godot for our women's clinic. It's a spiritual retreat. We are going to dive into the Word of God and focus on issues only we get. We'll also take time to get recharged and re-energized. Take a break from the everyday hustle and bustle and join us for Women's Clinic. Register now. Time.
time to man up. Men, join us this summer for the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. We are going to dive deep into issues only men can relate to, from relationships to career moves to the secret sins most men don't want to discuss in public. We get challenged a lot more than people think that we get challenged. More temptation. I don't know if you are a real man, but I'm talking to the real men. We expect to see you at the Real Men's Conference getting built up on the Word of God this August. See you there. You don't want to miss this one, guys. This is not for the ladies. It's the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. It's time to man up, men. For more information, just log to our website or call us. Be there. FCMI has a full schedule of events that will empower you to go and grow in business and ministry. Join us for our regional conference in Las Vegas in April, where you'll get a chance to network with like-minded entrepreneurs, pastors, and ministers to help your organization maximize its calling. And then our signature event this summer in Sacramento, FCMI's International Business and Ministry Conference in July. The theme, get up and grow your insights, concepts, and ideas. Do you have an idea, a witty invention, but don't know what to do with it? Come to the International Conference to find out what to do next. Our guest speaker includes Bishop Clarence McClendon. There will also be day sessions and a business mixer at Doubletree Hotel in Sacramento. Evening sessions at Calvary Christian Center. A children conference with fun activities for spiritual growth and development. Youth conference includes job preparation and a college career fair. Register now. And then in August, Dr. Brenda Godot presents the Fit for All Women's Health Fair. Ladies, we are offering health assessments, healthy food demonstrations, a mobile mammogram unit, and exercise demonstrations to name a few. Look for all our events. It's right on our website. 2016 is filled with events that will empower you to go and grow in business and ministry. Subscribe to us on YouTube and see the latest videos from Drs. Philip and Brenda Godot. It's easy. I am the God of more than enough. I am a El Shaddai God. I'll bring you back and then I'll lift you up. Just log on to YouTube and type in Philip Godot Ministries and then just click subscribe. The video messages are right there on your screen. And if you're out and about, we also have a smartphone app so you can catch the Godots on the go. The app is easy to find. Just search Calvary Christian Center for both Android and iPhone users. Stay informed, stay connected, and stay encouraged on YouTube and with our amazing app. Thank you, partners.